move on for the record all members are present we do have a set of minutes from the June 22nd meeting does anybody wish to move those in for approval so moved. moved by Gill do we have a second 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 by Larry uh, anything anybody wishes to change if not then all in favor of approving the minutes as written signify by saying aye aye, aye. 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 any opposed that's approved <laughs> Our bill payment this uh, week is $457,426.26. That is voucher number 2015-1119 through 1309. Uh, does anybody wish to move these in for payment? So move. Okay. Moved by Randy. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Gill. Any bills that anybody wishes to hold or... Uh, any other changes? If not, then all in favor of my paying these bills signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That's approved. Uh, we'll move on to departments. Uh, Paul is not able to be here this evening. Rich is. Anything in water sewer? Not really. We're just out to our service on all the grinder tanks throughout the uh, summer here. Crews are going around, putting all the bolts back in the tank lids as I was notified by a few residents. A lot of tanks were missing a few bolts, so we've been replacing those as we're out there, telling the guys to make sure that they're all put in. Uh, they'll be out doing hydrants. They have been out already, and they'll continue to go through to the yearly maintenance on the hydrants. Okay. Anything for Rich? Uh, Mike, how about recreation? I have no report tonight. Any news on the dance? Have we finalized any information there? Outright canceled. Outright canceled. And the seniors are in agreement with that? Yes. We've talked about it before. Okay. I'll never get anybody to give me my ten bucks for a dance if, if I can't go to a dance. <laughs> of course, the way I dance, nobody gives me ten bucks, but that's beside the point. Anything for Mike? Winding down on uh, baseball? Softball? Playoffs. Playoffs already? Playoffs. Scary. It's amazing you were able to get any games in with the weather. Thank you. Mike Clock, anything on building department? So you're going to be able to handle more complaints a day? <laughs> more than now. <laughs> Get more places to go, it sounds like. So it's, it's a pretty cool system. We're just about there. Anything else? Anything else for Mike? Thank you. Arlene, anything with the seniors? <laughs> Mini vacation. We're sorry that you're not able to use the uh, building very much right now. You do use the small rooms, though, correct? Oh, yeah. It's uh, the big room. The big room's going to come back bigger, better than ever, but it's going to take a few weeks. Thank you, Arlene. Uh, we're up to Wendell. Tim or Tim? We have the Wendell Show for you this evening, so we brought everybody. Um, first item on our agenda this evening is uh, a cooperating MS4 letter of intent. 
Uh, this is actually the, something that's being done by the Western New York Stormwater Coalition. You hear us talking about them a lot when we talk about our MS4 status. They do a lot of work for the different municipalities in Erie and Niagara County, help us to maintain our permits and meet some of our required elements. The Stormwater Coalition is actually applying for a grant to perform what they're calling an MS4 gap analysis and mapping project. The gap analysis involves a review of the town code to identify any requirements that may be inhibiting green infrastructure, such as the connection of downspouts to storm sewers. You hear us talk about this a lot when we're talking about subdivisions and site plan approvals. It's the requirements that we have to, to address to meet the state's stormwater permits. So they're going to do a code research and find out what things we may have on our books that may be making that difficult for people to achieve in the town. And then they're going to be doing a mapping portion, which will involve locating green infrastructure practices that we currently have in the town, and also storm sewer drainage systems at our municipal facilities, such as the town hall campus. Um, the coalition will be performing this for all members of the Stormwater Coalition, uh, including the town of Wheatfield. And they'll be sending out some more information on this in the middle of July. So w what they're looking for is basically a letter of support from all the members of the coalition so that they can include that with their grant application. Um, there's no cost to the town other than if they do get the grant for some coordination time, if they need to be shown a municipal, a municipal facility, walked around and shown where the pond is or any other items like that. There's no um, required funding matches or anything like that. So I'm not sure if the board actually needs to make a motion, but we've included one in our packet in case you care to do that, which would basically um, uh, authorize the uh, town supervisor to sign this letter of intent and return it to the Stormwater Coalition. It would show that the board is, be, is in favor of the project. I'll make that motion. Second. Okay, moved and seconded. Moved by Gil, second by Larry. Anything on the question? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? That's approved. Thank you. We, uh, we actually did forward along a Microsoft Word version of that letter that we included in our packet. So uh, when you have time, print that on town letterhead and you can sign that and get it it's in. It's already been prepared. I think I, I gave it to your desk. Great. My desk probably spat it back. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, the next item on our agenda has to do with the River Road Trail. Uh, as you know, we've been working with the town on the River Road Trail for several years now. Uh, the town received a grant for designing the whole trail and constructing phase one of the trail. Uh, the next step in the process is to authorize the design services. <laughs> We've complete, uh, included a motion and a proposal in our packet for your consideration. Uh, if you have any questions on that, we actually have Tim Walk here this evening to answer for you. Uh, he's been in uh, basically their point on this project at Wendell. Tim, this is a substantial amount of money. Can you explain what's covered by this amount of money? So the, the fee includes design of the entire trail. The trail is going to tie into the existing Greenway Trail at, at, that ends at Gratwick Park in the city of North Tonawanda and will end at the city of Niagara Falls Town of Wheatfield line uh, on the west end of the town. So it's designing the whole trail. Uh, at this point, it's assumed that there will be some on-road and some off-road. We're assuming that everything will stay south of the Conrail tracks um, and not go to the north side and not need a bridge. Um, it includes several uh, sub-consultants to do all the environmental work uh, that's going to be needed, uh, wetlands, uh, surveys and delineations, uh, soil borings, archaeological um, uh, desktop studies, um, as well as a phase one audit uh, is, is included as well. Um, there was also a sign consultant to do the signage because for the Greenway Trail it's going to need to meet the Greenway, Niagara River Greenway signage standards. Um, our proposal also includes bidding services for phase one. Well, at the end of this project, besides being able to bid phase one, we'll also have a cost estimate for the entire trail so that the town can pursue a grant for constructing the second phase. That's what's included. Okay, thank you. 
I don't because I don't know how long it's going to take to get approval through. This is federal funds administered by the state. Um, so there's federal approvals needed, there's state approvals needed, and the biggest um, hurdle I think that has to be crossed early is Conrail approval to build on Conrail property, and I have no idea how long that's going to take. Our hope is that we can bid this in late winter, early spring, and be able to, you know, potentially start constructing next construction season. That would be the hope. I'm going to go from here over to Ed Mungold. With this size of project, we're probably going to have to be bonding this and eventually getting reimbursed for most of it. At what point can we can we pass this without having done a bond resolution on this project? At the present time, no. Um, if this were to be approved today, uh, basically it would have to come out of the fund balance uh, because there is no bond authorization for this project. Okay, so the next step in this process is you got to get together with Matt, and we have to decide how we're going to do a uh, a bonding resolution before we can approve this actual motion. Correct? Yes. Or the or in the alternative, it would be using fund balance to pay for the project. You know, we don't we don't have that much fund balance right. that we can afford to do that. You know. right. And the bond resolution should not only be for for this portion, but if they have an the estimate of the You don't have to spend the money, but you. That's correct. You know, spend the money. But you have to. If you haven't got the resolution in place before we approve expenditures, those expenditures cannot be part of that bond. That is correct. So, my personal feeling on this, Tim, is uh, you've done an awful lot of work and it deserves to proceed, but we can't do that at this time. Okay. Now it's got to follow the steps. One question: Is there any way to? at least authorize a small time and expense that we could start conversations with Conrail um, because that I don't know how long that's going to take um, and we might be able to get dual paths going um, it's just a suggestion I don't you know maybe like a, a what's a what's a small expense I, I don't know I mean ten thousand dollar time and expense authorization to proceed which would then come out of this at the time of authorization I'm just thinking that would maybe Keep the I'm process not much moving. in favor of it because this grant is an 80-20 grant. That means we're put, we'd be spending eight thousand dollars that we don't need to spend. I'd rather I'd rather wait the extra couple okay. of weeks That's or whatever. It's it just a suggestion. I hope the gentlemen agree. Mm -hmm. Okay, then we'll, we'll need a bonding resolution between now and hopefully the next meeting. Once the bond resolution is approved, there will be a 20-day uh, uh, like stop-up period and a 30-day uh, rent period. So you're looking at probably uh, six weeks yeah. time period for any awards you could be made. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. <coughs> okay. Uh, Tim, you had one more thing? Uh, yes, we had uh, one last item on our agenda, and it's actually a, a carryover from our last meeting, and it has to deal with a parking variance at 3448 Niagara Falls Boulevard. Uh, after the last meeting, the board requested to see some plans on that, and uh, the applicant did provide me with some PDFs, which I got to everyone's mailboxes. Um, so I guess we're, we're, we're back at that topic. Okay, uh, Tim is here again. Dr. Hannon, excuse me. Uh, I guess we're back to the same questions we asked last time. Our concern isn't so much for what you have in mind. I think your project would probably work <coughs> wonderfully. What happens if down the road somebody decides to put retail in that spot or
I want to do nothing to hinder my patients having Parkinson's disease tonight. I don't want to put something in there that's going to be detrimental to my business. I don't want to kind of be bothered. I don't want to work with anyone. They're just in my practice. Sure. I mean, I don't want to answer how you guys can cover yourself with that. It, it's definitely good business for the town of Wheatfield the way you have it planned. The question is, 20 years down the road or 30 or 40 years down the road, we have to be careful to not have people parking out on Niagara Falls Boulevard to do business. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's a limited space. You know, I don't know how it's not covered. Most people can work Yeah, the funny, the funny thing about this particular variance is for some reason this variance comes to the town board as opposed to the ZBA or the planning board. Uh, none of the town board members are here that I can see. So we, our planning board members are here, I can see. Um, so we don't have their recommendation at this point. Is, no, the, is this building going where the existing pad is right now? That's right. Where there was a 3,000 foot. Right, there was. Yeah. Was that building there when you when you bought? That's yours? It's my, it's my personal use. I don't, I have I, no intention to ever do anything with that. I don't have situations that if I ever wanted to use that for anything, I'd have to come back and talk to everyone along the way. Do you have enough property to add parking if it ever happened where you add park, where, where there's yeah, a need for it? That's what I'm saying. Basically, I knocked down that other 6,000 square foot building and put another 12 spots in it. But like you said, the concern's not with me. I, it's, it's, the, it's the down the road, right? Exactly. Exactly. But I, I keep thinking, can't you put things in place? Does anybody wish to make this motion? I have a question. Is the parking calculation, is his back storage area affecting the calculations on the parking? I mean, is that throwing this off a little bit, the parking? Uh, there, are, there are three <laughs> spaces that are accounted for as part of that. So if you neglected, neglected that as a storage facility. So basically, if you didn't count that, you'd have three less parking spaces that you'd be getting a variance for. Say that one more time. You would have three less. You, you'd be asking, they'd be asking for a variance for 13 spaces as opposed to 16 Versus if you discounted 16, that right. storage building. Could there be a deed restriction with his, him agreeing to it that nothing will ever be uh, put it actually right on the deed, that nothing could ever come in there that would require more parking? And then when he sold it, it would have to go with the building, the deed would. So the new owner would know it. Nothing could ever come in there. I, I'd have to pass on that. to Matt um, that one. Well, the problem with the variance and the point you brought up, variance runs with the land pretty much forever, unless it's a period where it's not used and somehow it could uh, release. But variances go with the land forever. The problem with the deed restriction is um, it may be difficult to enforce, and that may, and I don't know, this gentleman would have to think about it, it may be a certain restriction or taking a property it could be considered because that may very well, if, when you try to sell it and if there's a deed restriction, it may certainly reduce the value. But he uh, would, he's asking for it so he'd know then that whenever uh, he sells it, it wouldn't be worth as much. I, I think at that point, I mean, uh, down the road, it, it would probably be difficult to enforce. I mean, you, it's possible, but it would probably be difficult to enforce and difficult okay. to construct in a way that would work and it would, that would be a difficult way of doing it. I don't know if you <laughs> that's realistic at this point. When I look at the proposed site plan, I'm not really seeing room for any more parking spots. I don't either. Well, we're at the point.
point where does any anybody wish to make the motion to approve Mr. Hannon, Dr. Hannon's request? I had one more question. Go ahead. Uh, so, wh where's the protection in this thing if you know, ten years down the road, you know, what 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 is the town billing department because you know, it's going to come to Mike's office and you know. This business is gone and a new business is coming in and now they need five more parking lots that aren't there. What, what's, what, what, what are we going to use as a lever to trigger some mechanism to uh, allow some new business so that they can, so that we can force them to put five more spots in before they're allowed to do whatever they're going to do? So well, they know they need to do it, but you may have some business come in figuring out, well, I'll just do without the parking spots. Well, no, they, they have to go to planning. Okay. There's a change, that's what I was going to say, it kicks, that's what kicks it in. Change of occupancy, um, it's an, whether it's, again, mercantile, storage, whatever, <coughs> the requirements change. Automatically kicks it in front of planning board. Planning board does review just like they're doing now for his new business. So his protection or the person that goes in our protection is that a business comes in here 20 or 30 or 40 years later, they still have to make the requirements of the code of that date. So if we need uh, 10 more parking spots, he takes down the barn. I, I guess a question back to Matt, then our new attorney. <laughs> I guess what the town board's kind of, you know, worried about here is, you know, Hopefully he's going to be here for 50 years, and you know those 16 parking <coughs> stalls are going to be his for 50 years. But 10 years from now, if something happens, are you know, are we in a position that we're we're okay allowing this, and something else can come back in in 10 years, and we'll we we, we can uh, sufficiently handle it? Well, I'm, I'm like like everyone acknowledges, I'm coming in a bit of a disadvantage because I don't think I've seen the maps and I haven't had a, a chance to see the documentation on this. But um, certain aspects of a variance travel with the property forever, um, and he's got some specific uses that, as Mike said, may trigger a certain required amount of parking. Of course, if someone comes back with some different use, that parking um, <coughs> requirements may change. The, I guess the question is to draft a variance, um, if a variance is going to happen that's close enough to limit it very specifically, so if another use comes in, it's the other requirements are still going to be triggered. Um, but the problem is with the variance, it doesn't go with the particular owner. It goes forever, pretty much. So if that clears it a little bit. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I got a 6,000 patient practice in Kenmore with two parking spots. So it's like in street parking, but we're making do what we're figuring out. And believe me, it's a pain in my butt. I, I don't own it. Have all these parking spots. It's too dicey. So now I had to follow rules to knock down my first building for 6,000 to get 31 parking spaces when I used a max of eight. I look really good at people come to my practice and go, you're dead. No one's ever there. But it's not true. We only have. We only need four spots because we see four rooms at a time. So that answers my question. He only has four. So, you know, I got a lot of parking. And if I did knock down that back storage unit, which I use for my personal use anyway, because I don't even you know, want to fool with it, <coughs> there's, there is ten more spots there, probably easily. So, I, I don't know the legalese of it. If there was something that could be placed on me, I would still think 
somewhere down the road so it comes back to you. If I sold this, if, you know, if I was down there tomorrow and they sold it, I mean, the scenario that The, the thing is, is that a change of use may not necessarily be a change of occupancy. So it would be the change of occupancy as defined in the building code that would, would bring somebody new coming there back to the planning board. But if it was a change of use, that was the same type of occupancy. Uh, examples, I think this type of occupancy is a, is a doctor, is a dentist, or a, an architect, or an engineering type of professional office. They're all the same type of occupancies. They have their different uses. But th the occupancy would be what would keep you know, something from uh, a bigger gathering place or uh, however it's designed in the building code. That's a different that's a different occupancy, so that would come back. What is this rated now? C one? It is it is zone commercial. Is your entire property zone commercial, Tim, or is it a part of it? No, it's not very deep at all. Okay, gentlemen, does anybody wish to make a motion on this? Does anybody wish to make a motion on this? Can we change this table for two weeks? I know our new attorney's on, and I think we threw a whole bunch of new questions out here tonight. So I, I think we're getting close to an answer, but if we could wait just two weeks and get a few more answers, I, I'd be a little bit more comfortable. I feel like I'm being rushed into something here right now. Okay. If nothing else, then uh, we'll table this motion for the next meeting. Uh, Tim, anything else? That's all we have this evening. Tim, I have one question I know Bob was going to ask. Over on Lockport Road, as far as the storm water, I know there was a, a, a silt fence, the swips over on where all the dirt fill has been placed. I know that you and Paul and Bob at that time were, had sent a letter out. Has anything, is he in compliance now is my question. The guy up on the north side of Lockport Road? Correct. Uh, actually, Mike, I think Mike Clock was in, no? That letter uh, that was a Paul Sigmund, uh, Bob O'Toole. <laughs> it's a storm water question, yeah. I, well, you were a little bit involved in it. I just uh, wondered if you... Other than telling them which, what, what they were violating, that's, that's the information that I provided to them. I had heard that they had received a pretty uh, nasty letter from the, is it the gas company up there whose easement that they were on? Uh, power, power lines back there. Yeah. All right, well, well, I asked Paul in two weeks. Uh, yeah, and Matt, last I recall, they were... To speed on that one also. Yeah, last I recall, they were waiting to see what, what the backlash from, from that and how, uh, how the, the particular resident reacted to that uh, letter Thank you. from them. Okay, let's move on to regular motions. Uh, Matt? Okay, uh, motion number one is from the town attorney. To declare the town of Wheatfield asserts or claims no interest in a vacant lot located on Moyer Road in the town of Wheatfield, SBL number 163.02-1-31.211, as said lot was never dedicated to the town and any requirement for dedication no longer exists as indicated by the current owner and, conform and confirmed with the building inspection department. And one modification to that, I, I did speak to the engineers, they have indicated there is a uh, town water line that runs through that. I've looked at the map, the map uh, indicates that uh, there is an existing 15 foot wide public water main easement, so to the extent that there is that easement there or the necessity for any additional easement with regard to the water to be added, that um, the uh, the interest can be released except for those which would not be released. Okay, does anybody wish to make the motion? Now this also 
shows brandy, wine, rum. <coughs> I don't believe it was ever defined as a street. It was it was a right of way that was in place for potential future use when the subdivision filled out if it was determined to be needed. Yeah, it's not wide enough to build on. It's it is wide enough for a road. Correct. It's a it's a 66 foot wide right of way, so it doesn't meet a minimum lot width of 80. And the it has never been um, dedicated to the okay. town. It has been held in reserve, yeah. and at this point, there's no need for it apparently. And it may be under contract to a neighbor, um, but for title purposes, they need this resolution or motion from the town in order to uh, clear any title issues. So we want to give up this th this property and uh, the possibility of ever putting a road in there. Right. Well, I, well, we don't own it right now. The the town um, doesn't necessarily have a right to do so or to put anything there at this point. There was no dedication, as far as I can check and researching the records there was no application there was no ever any claim that the town had to it but um, it is under contract for sale and for title purposes to uh, for the developer to pass clear title he needs us to indicate that we have no claim to it and, and as I've the engineers told me the only claim we may have is for the water line that runs through there obviously there's an easement for maintenance of that water line so the easement would stay in place that would stay in place that wouldn't be vacated but um, it, it's more of a, uh, a decision for the record or a, a motion for the record. We really don't have, from my research, any claim to it, um, except for the fact that at one time it was contemplated to perhaps be a road. But it appears from the developer's point of view that they are no longer going to utilize it as such and it's not necessary. Okay, does anybody wish to make the motion? So move. Move by Art. Do we have a second? I'll second it. Second by Gill. <coughs> Anything further on the question? All in favor of approving, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That's approved. <coughs> Next motion, uh, authorizing the town supervisor to execute the settlement and release agreement to facilitate the previously agreed upon settlement between the town and North Tonawana National Little League in the amount of $4,000 and authorize a town attorney to execute a stipulation of discontinuance and said lawsuit for filing in North Tonawanda City Court <coughs> pending said lawsuit in consideration of the settlement. So move. Okay, moved by Larry. Do we have a second? I'll second. Second by Randy. Anything on the question? On the question, uh, Mike, everything been satisfied? Yeah. Just a little, just a little league, yeah. Well, this covers all of our costs that we actually had, plus a little bit extra, but not enough to replace the floor should the floor go bad. Um, the damage itself. The actual damages are covered plus a little bit. But if the floor were to go bad because yeah. of that leak, that would not be covered. That was the addition in the lawsuit. It's been two years yeah. and it hasn't gone bad. Yet. It's probably not going to go bad at this point in time, but this this satisfies everything else up to this point. Well, I, well, I had the floor company guy come back out uh, and yeah. And uh, Okay, we have a motion by Larry, second by Randy. Anything further on the question? If not, then all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? <coughs> That's approved. Uh, third motion. And this is a motion from which I would have to recuse myself from any legal advice um, based on the conflict. Uh, I can answer questions, but to approve or deny authorization of the town supervisor to ex execute the town attorney retainer agreement with appointed attorney Matthew E. Brooks for the term of June 30th, 2015 to December 31st, 2015.
Okay, do we wish to go into executive session on this or is somebody ready to make this motion? Is anybody Suggest ready? Suggest we go into executive session after this. Okay, can we wait until the end of the meeting? Yes. Okay, thank you. Then we'll move on, Matt. Next motion to schedule a public hearing regarding the rezoning of 3939 Niagara Falls Boulevard to entirely C1 from the present status of C1, R2, and R3 due to the receipt of a rezoning application to be held on a date to be determined at Wheatfield Town Hall at a time to be determined and to authorize said rezoning application to be referred to the Niagara County Planning Board. So moved. Okay, moved by Gil. Gil, do you pick a date and time? Next meeting, uh, um, we may will be we to have to go to the planning board first, the county planning board first, before we have our public hearing? You're asking me? Mm -hmm. I think we have this afternoon. I think we have a referral report. We have a public hearing at or about the same time. So, is two weeks enough for uh, us to have the public hearing? I would suggest a little bit longer. We're going to need uh, two weeks to publish, once a week for two weeks, and then um, time for notification ten days before the hearing. So the two weeks uh, will probably be pushing the schedule. I would suggest a meeting after that. August 10th? Does that sound right? 10th or 24th? Right. 10th or 24th, whatever one you want. The well, 10th would be four weeks. The gentleman would like this done as fast as it can practically be done. I think we all agree. It it should be done. How's Aug is August 10th a, a meeting night? I don't have it on me. Let's assume it is. What's that? Gil, meeting? August 10th, a meeting night. Yeah, yeah, that's what I just looked up. Perfect. Okay, okay so we'll go for August 10th. Uh, how much time will we need? 15 minutes? Call it 7.15? 15 minutes, I would. Gil, it's your motion. That sounds good. Okay, August 10th at 7.15 p.m. Do we have a second? I'll second. Second by Randy. Anything further on the question? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, so August 10th here for uh, me, public hearing. Matt? Okay, next motion. It's a motion to schedule a public hearing regarding the rezoning of 2968 <coughs> Niagara Falls Boulevard to C1 from a partial status of C1 to be held on a date to be determined at the Wheatfield Town Hall at a time to be determined. And I'll go ahead and make this motion. Let's do it on the same evening at uh, 7 o'clock. So that will be August 10 at 7 o'clock. Now for these hearings, we're going to have to be notifying a whole lot of people, right? Uh, that's correct. I already talked a little to Kathy and we'll get that done. Okay. We need a second. Second. Second by Art. Anything on the question? This is Bedore Tours. They had asked us some time ago. They've gone through the process. They've gone through the planning board. The planning board is recommending approval, but we do have to have a public hearing before we can make the zoning change. Anything further on the question? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? That's approved. Next motion authorizing the town supervisor to accept and execute on behalf of the town a proposed plan by Wendell to map, plan, and prepare a report regarding sidewalks and or the widening of Kruger Road. Now, before we proceed, Tim, you had uh, not in writing but verbally stated that it would be less if we only looked at sidewalks. The primary purpose of that would be to be preparing a request for a grant. We need the information to be able to do a grant. Do you have it? Do you, can you give us a not to exceed number on that? Speaking of grants, Bernie just walked in. <clears throat> then I'd like to go ahead and make the motion to uh, authorize Wendell to expend up to $3,200 on this grant request. 
Uh, as Art just mentioned, Bernie is here. Bernie, you want to let us know your latest thinking on whether or not we have a good chance of getting a grant for Kruger Road? You seemed pretty positive the other day that you thought we'd had a pretty good chance on that. Never guarantee any grants. I think we have a good chance. That's what I think. Okay, but you do need Wendell to help to work with you on a uh, proposal to do that. Absolutely. If I don't have an engineering report, then that gives me no meat for the, uh, for the application. Okay. So I need something. Okay, gentlemen, does, do we have a second? Second. Second by Art. Anything further on the question? On the question, are we looking at both sides of Kruger, uh, the north and the source, or are you fixed on one side or the other side? Is where the are you going to be designing it and seeing where it fits the best, whether it's on, or do you have a particular side that you're looking to do the design in? Well, I, I think they're going to do a cursory look to see which side is best, but I, I believe they've already fond of the north side of the road just because there are only two street crossings so that's less striping and signage for crossings on that okay. side and there's no utility poles there so that's most likely going to be the cheapest side of the road on, on, the, north on the north side on the north side correct okay, okay. <coughs> I didn't know if you were looking at both sides you're going to come up with estimates for both or you're you're just going to be on the north yeah okay it's going to be the north to my, to my question is you were going to do widening and sidewalks for 37 now you're eliminating all the widening. You're only looking at sidewalks for 32. Is that a not to exceed, or is that a, a, a lump sum? Have, I guess have you ever come in under this 32 or a not to exceed number? I'm just asking. Well, the, the the previous number we had looked at both of those scenarios, and really the 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 extra cost in there was really just the estimating time, coming up with the different price scenarios. We still have to go out and basically gather the same information in the field. It's not going to be survey, but we got to have an approximate number of driveways and street crossings and what utilities might be in the way. So the estimating portion of that would be what the time saver is, the cost savings. Yeah, it's important to note that this is not approving sidewalks at this point. It's just to find out whether or not grants are available to make the sidewalks expense palatable, more palatable. Right. So back to my question, is it $3,200 or is the time and material not to exceed $3,200? Looking to see what our original proposal was. It was a hard number originally, I think. It goes back to last week. Um, it was a indicated lump sum of 37. Right. We were at a lump sum fee of 3,700. But okay. if if it's the board's pleasure, we could make it not to time and expense not to exceed a 32. Well, my motion is not to exceed 32. And Art seconded that motion unless he wishes to change. No, that's okay. Okay, so it can come in under then. It's not to exceed 3,200. <laughs> okay, anything further on the question? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? That's approved. Next uh, motion. Uh, resolution to recommend to the New York State Department of Transportation of the placement of street writing at intersections of Moyer Road and Shawnee Road and Clemmer Road and Shawnee Road and for the DOT to undertake any studies necessary for the placement of said street lighting. Okay, this comes from a gentleman who was in here probably two meetings ago begging us to do something about street lights and slowing down traffic on Shawnee Road. We sent out a letter asking them to do a study and they sent us back a letter saying, we don't do general studies. We don't put lights up to slow down traffic. Uh, we don't put lights up unless there's a safety reason. So they came back and said, if you can give us a particular spot where we think a light is, is needed, uh, that they would study that spot. So I guess it's going to be my turn again uh, to make the motion that we ask them to take a look at Clemmer Road and Shawnee Road. You have a wide angle there. It's a, a probably a 70 degree angle where you're trying to take <coughs> left hand turns off of Shawnee getting onto Clemmer and, Clemmer and that's pretty bad. <coughs> when the traffic's coming at a high rate of speed, the, the cars go around the cars trying to take the left hand turns and that's dangerous. 
The other one that comes to mind would be Moyer Road and Shawnee Road. Uh, the particular problem there comes in the wintertime. Uh, you're trying to get up a hill, trying to get some speed up with traffic coming at you at 50 and 60 miles an hour. A street light would help that situation, I think, quite a bit. Uh, so those are the two thoughts that I had in mind, and that would be my motion. Does while, I, while we're on that, I'd like to add a add an intersection to uh, to this motion. Uh, after listening to them past couple meetings about uh, Kruger Road, I've been thinking about it a lot, and I noticed right at the corner of Kruger Road, and Niagara Falls Boulevard, there's no street light. The state widened that intersection, moved it way over, and there's nothing. There's one on Norman, and it's tucked in maybe uh, two, three hundred feet. You look at Schultz Road, uh, you look at Mavis Road, uh, Maple Road right here. There's a light at the corner of it. I mean, that's really dark coming onto that road. And it's 55 miles an hour coming off it on the boulevard. You're talking about adding a, a street, <clears throat> street needs a street light, light at that corner on Kruger Road and the boulevard. You're talking about adding a street lamp, or are you talking about adding a, a stoplight? It needs a, it, all the other roads on the boulevard have a light coming. You look at Eric Road, there's a street light at the corner. You look at Mavis Road, you look at Maple so Road. You're talking about a light. Yeah, yeah, you're a talking light, about street light. I'm talking signals. about stoplights. Okay. Traffic signals, I think, is what you wanted for. Yeah. Street light or street light? We need to write them a letter to the state and ask them to put, they never put it in when they did the intersection. It's there, but it's up on the front of that one property. Way they down never, the next road in Norman. You, oh, it's down, down on Norman Road, and it's tucked in a couple hundred feet. Yeah. That intersection's yeah. dark. Can we change the wording on that first motion, Bob, and put traffic signal? And maybe and then add Gills on for a, tra uh, for a yeah, street I think, light? I think tr Gills probably should be a secondary. A second motion? Second. Okay. Okay. And a second. Almost. That, I mean, that's a safety hazard there. If somebody's walking in that road, Somebody's coming down the boulevard and winding right in there. There's no light. You'd never see them. Okay. Because we're dealing with traffic signals on Shawnee and Shawnee right, I Road, thought maybe Gill, it was I'd something like we could add into it. I'd like to suggest that we stick to that for this motion. Okay. And then you can add your motion after. I'll make a separate motion. Okay. Do we have a second on my motion? Yeah. If we can get support from the DOT, I. Okay, Art, you're I wouldn't mind that. No, not at all. Is that is that a second? Yes, okay. second. Moved and seconded for po possible traffic signals at Clemmer and at Moyer. Anything further on the question? So the motion is going to say signal traffic instead, signals. Of, instead of lighting. So you, you've changed the wording in the motion. Right. Yeah, traffic signal I think makes more sense. Yes. It's more clear. Thank you. Okay, nothing, if nothing further, all in favor? <coughs> Aye. 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 Any opposed? That's approved. Now, Gil, if you want to make your motion. I'd like to make a motion to have the, the New York State put a street light at the end of Kruger Road and, and Niagara Falls Bo Boulevard. Second. On the question. Go ahead. Is that New York State that does that? It's a they state. widen the intersection. They never put a light there. They changed the intersection. The, light, the light's actually there, but if you remember the way the road used to go, it was at an angle where it came out to the right. boulevard. That's where the light is. They never moved it. It's, it's not still at the there. corner. They changed it. They put a whole lot more right. lawn and came straight out to the boulevard. So what they nearly need to do is they need to move that light over to the intersection. Uh, ask street light to be moved or whatever or added. Okay, uh, we have a motion by Gill, a second by Larry. Anything further on this, this question? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, that's approved. So, Kathy, you're going to have to find those files and forms and we'll get to it. Okay, if no further motions, Matt, then we'll move on to board member items. Mm -hmm. Councilman Helwig. Okay. Councilman Gerbeck. The Veterans Memorial Group would like to begin our fundraiser. Uh, and in order to do that, we need to authorize uh, 
the design uh, of the layout that we have in mind and the plan, so the plans need to be engineered uh, by our architect. We also need to have a budgetary costs uh, evaluated and put together by our engineering firms. And lastly, the uh, presentation and beginning to put together our literature for handout data uh, that we can give out to our prospective uh, donators. That money would have to come out of the authorized fund for the Veterans Memorial Group that we have with the town. Uh, I talked to Ed, and I'm going to have to work out the details with him, but I would like to have prior approval of the board to go forward obviously not exceeding any of the monies that are already in the fund. Do you want to make that a motion, or do you want some all of, all of All of that is my motion, if you can get it, Kathy. Mm -hmm. Okay. Basically, your motion is to authorize the expenditure of funds that have already been approved. That's correct. I'll second. Moved and seconded. Anything further on the question? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? That's approved. <coughs> so hopefully we can get this project moving along. Yes, that would be great. And that's all I have for this evening. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Art. Uh, Councilman Retzleff. I'm all set. Councilman Doucette. I've got some correspondence from Burkles Fire Hall. Burkles would like to add Tyler Wood to their active membership roles, and I'll make that motion. Okay, okay we have moved and seconded. Anything on the question? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? That's approved. Welcome, Tyler. That's it. I got a couple of things. Uh, for everybody's interest, we did get another payment of casino funds. In addition to the $57,000 we had a while ago, we got another $18,338.45. It was actually in our account on July 6th. And Ed, I believe we put that into general fund again? That's correct. Uh, so that's for interest. I already mentioned about the FOIL request uh, where the applicant for additional spreading of Equate has withdrawn their application. Uh, we do have need at the Niagara Sanitation landfill is virtually done. All of the material has been pulled. All of the material is gone forever. There is more material in there which has some hazard to it, and it's been recommended by DEC that we put a gate across the front or possibly just a couple of poles with uh, something in the way so that people don't go back there for picnicking. Uh, it's not the best place in the world to picnic at this point. I did talk to Paul, and he thinks he can do, his guys can do the work, so... Well, if you see a, the fencing coming down over there, it's not because it's a good spot to go visit on the weekends. We'll be putting something up shortly after that comes down. Uh, there are some PCBs and there are some other things in there that you really don't want to go messing with. And that's about all I have. So we would move, move on to a meeting. Our next meeting is July 27th, and I guess at this point that would still be at 7.30. There are no pre preliminaries that I'm aware of. That being said, we're back to public input. This is your opportunity to speak on any subject before the town. Is there anybody who wishes to speak? When I went and sat back down, I was wondering how you knew something was sent to the school and to the fire board. You must have received something yourself. The school yourself. had contacted me mm -hmm. personally, and that, that goes back quite a while ago. What was the other Not, one? Nothing recent? It was Lynn Fusco contacting me, so it goes back a ways. Okay, because I foiled the information from the school, and I have her yeah. response. Yeah, they sent us a letter. After, after talking to me, they sent us a letter, and they sent that to... Uh, I, I assume they sent that to Roselle. Mm -hmm. What was the other one? The fire board, you said? The fire board, I have not seen any minutes from the fire board meeting, but I do understand that somebody sat in on that meeting. Brian, you weren't there, right? And I don't see any other firemen that might have been there. Okay. So I, don't, I haven't seen the minutes, so I do not know 
if the fire board took any actions or made any recommendations at this point. Okay, so there's nothing new for me to foil from Kathy on Roselle. I don't believe there's anything. The minutes, the minutes of that meeting will be available. Mm -hmm. They're not yet. Okay. Out. Thank you. Anybody else on any subject? Good evening. Good evening. Um, I just wanted to ask maybe Tim more about this uh, MS4 letter of intent for the Western New York Stormwater Coalition. Um, we'd be giving them our support in order for them to apply for the grant. I, I think that's correct. Would this be a situation where they'd be a resource to us to currently look at current development proposals to make sure that they are coinciding with the New York State laws? I mean, it seems like a real nice resource for us to utilize, um, and we'd be asking of their support. They're asking for our support, so we'd be asking for their input in return. Well, what the grant is that they're trying to get is, um, for a lot of you here, these green infrastructure practices that we talk about a lot. There's a, a, a whole list of them that the DEC allows in their design standards. Yeah, I know all that. Yeah. So what they want to do is they want to go through the town's codes, and they're going to do this for all the towns that are in the uh, coalition. Right. And try to find ways that, um, that the town codes are written that aren't allowing some of those things to happen. Again, the example is not allowing rooftop disconnection. That's a big, that's a big sure. one of their ways to meet those requirements. And the town we feel does, a lot of other municipalities do have... have uh, um, yeah, I guess my uh, ask is that. there may be development proposals currently in that aren't following but they might be following, or that aren't following our laws, that they might be able to look at and say they're not meeting the codes? No, they're, they're just looking at the town code in general. Okay. They're not looking at any specific So they wouldn't practice. be interested in doing that? I, I don't believe As that. a resource to us? Um, I, I don't believe that's what their, their grant funding is for, that they're, that they're trying. Okay. To. Just trying to make sure, you know, all the town codes are met, you know. Yeah, the Stormwater Coalition works in a sense to support the towns and other municipalities so that we don't do something in our town that's going to affect, for example, the town of Niagara and the city of Niagara Falls that's going to cause them problems. So the Stormwater Coalition looks at how water moves from place to place to place uh, and may re make recommendations for changes. They don't do the changes yet, at least I haven't heard of any projects that Stormwater Coalition has done? Uh, no, but actually one of the, after this grant is hopefully obtained, their next grant that they'd be going after in the subsequent year or two um, would be to cover uh, an attorney that would work with the Stormwater Coalition and each of the different attorneys in the municipalities involved with that to say, okay, look, these are the things we found in your codes mm -hmm. that are causing you know, challenges to development. You know, do you want to change it or not? <laughs> and just pointing those things out. And, and if you want to change that, help come up with you know, verbiage or, or work with you to determine ways that you can do that. Yeah, it still comes down to our decision. That's my understanding. It's yes. just that they would be making recommendation based upon the new DEC regs. Right. Right, to keep them in alignment with the New York State requirements. Yeah. Which are disasters. Well, they're for a reason. Uh, one other thing. Um, I don't know what's going on. Uh, my concern about a couple of properties in our neighborhood, Lemke area, um, the one that has the barn falling down on Eric Road between Lemke and the Boulevard. I don't know if anything's being done with that. looks like one of the houses on the Hoarders episode. Um, and it's a safety concern of mine uh, with a lot of kids in the neighborhood and things like that. Are you aware of what he's talking about, Mike? Okay, thanks. And then uh, the other pieces of property be there is a house further down towards the boulevard that it seems to not be occupied for a couple of years. Again, I'll go to Mike.
No, I mean, it just concerns me looking the way it does in the neighborhood. <laughs> we don't want anybody's property value to drop because of things like that, you know. It's, it's weird. I mean, it's a nice house. It's just falling apart now and the roof's falling off and everything else. Sure. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm more bringing it to your awareness. I didn't know if you were aware of it and then that kind of stuff, see, see if there's progress being made. Okay. And then the, the other one was that barn falling down on the boulevard, heading, um, going towards past Nash. There's a big barn on the boulevard. Might be. Across from Meadowbrook? Yeah, that's actually in the city of North Tonawanda. Oh, that's not. We feel okay. Thanks. That's it, guys. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Yeah, we'll take care of it. Thank you. It's a big commercial barn. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, anybody else for public input? If nobody else, I'll entertain a motion to go into executive session where we would want the board members, we would want Kathy, and we would want uh, Matt. Um, I, somebody want to make a motion to go into executive session? So moved. Do we have a second? Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed?